Hey guys, I wanted to share some changes that I've made to my 3BSM for the F35B project recently. Namely, I'm now using servos to drive these ring gears instead of the gear motors and encoders that were on there before. The reason I've done that is that I was noticing the performance of those gear motors was getting pretty bad over time. Uh, they'd start out, the, the duct would run fine during bench testing, it would run fine during some flights, but shortly afterwards it would start sticking under thrust loads during transitions, and then after that it would even start sticking when on the ground with no load at all. So some pretty disappointing performance degradation from those. Um, I don't know if it was just the quality of the motors causing problems. Um, I don't think I was uh, overloading them at all, but um, I figured the best way to solve that would just be to transition to something that's a little bit more durable. Uh, the servos, not only do they have a more durable gear train and just overall construction than those gear motors, but they've got higher quality motors, better electronics, and that sort of thing. Uh, the caveat there is that these can't be just any old servo. Um, you'll notice that uh, the, the rotations that the servo has to perform to complete a full transition of the duct is something like four to six full revolutions. And that's just not something that you see from off-the-shelf hobby servos. And not only do they have to rotate multiple times, but they also have to retain full proportional control while doing that. Uh, I need to be able to finally control the angle that the servo reaches even after it's done a few revolutions. So these are high-tech MD85MG servos and they use magnetic encoders instead of potentiometers in order to enable multiple rotations. But also they're running CAN bus protocol because PWM just doesn't have the resolution to control a servo over that range. Uh, so that's why you see the four wires here instead of three. In addition to the power and ground, there's CAN high and CAN low signal lines. Now the cool thing about CAN is that it's a bus, so I've got this little breakout board here that's just bussing all of the signals from the servos together. And only those two CAN high and low signal lines are needed to connect to the microcontroller here. Uh, so I could add many more servos and not have to branch out more signal lines at all. They just all bust together, which is kind of cool. Uh, this is just a, it's an Arduino compatible development board that's got some hardware necessary to run CAN bus on it, a CAN transceiver, that sort of thing. And I've adapted my code to take the PWM input from this servo tester or from the flight controller once I install it on the vehicle and then generate the necessary CAN messages to actuate the servos. Uh, it's also capable of receiving feedback from the servos. Uh, the servos provide their position, their torque, their speed. Uh, I can get motor temperature, that sort of thing, which should give me an opportunity to uh, just improve the robustness of everything, error checking, uh, stuff like that in the future. Um. This isn't UAV CAN, which some people will probably ask about. Uh, UAV CAN is a version of CAN bus that's becoming really popular on, on flight controllers, autopilots nowadays. Uh, ArduPilot supports it, a uh, handful of peripherals. Uh, and while the high-tech servos do support UAV CAN, there currently aren't UAV CAN messages that allow me to get the, the multiple rotation with proportional feedback performance that I need from these servos. Um, so for now, they're just running CAN 2.0. Uh, in the future, if, if the UAV CAN protocol expands to include that sort of thing, or if we do a custom servo firmware, uh, then that might change, but just CAN 2.0 for now. Uh, so I'll go ahead and move my servo tester here. So you can see it's now a little bit slower. Uh, the servos are not quite as fast as those gear motors, which is one of the consequences of the higher torque. Um, I could have chosen a different pinion gear to speed that up. Uh, these are Servo City brass pinion gears that fit right on the spline. Uh, but this I thought was a good combination of torque and speed. Uh, I don't really need, like there's no reason to have the airplane transition faster than three or four seconds. Um, I do plan to run these on a bit higher voltage when it's actually installed just to kind of get the most performance out of it, but uh, for now I think this is fine. So 
so you can see, I still have full proportional control over where the duct is during the cycle. Uh, I'm going to have yaw control as well from that third motor, the same way you saw it from, from those gear motors. And that's about it. Uh, it. It's ready to install on the airplane now. I've been working on it for, for quite a while. Uh, so I'll get it on there, I'll do some test flights, uh, make some improvements to the code where needed, uh, and, and post some more videos uh, coming up here. So thanks for watching and stay tuned.